8.38 on Austin's Morning News with Mark Ed and Sergeant Sam. Richard Garriott is a legendary video game programmer and designer. Not uh, He's not known uh, not only in Austin, but the United States and the world for his video game programming and design. And now uh, Richard Garriott is on a special mission in October. He's going to outer space. Out of this world. Out of this world, and he's with us this morning here in the KLBJ studios. Richard, welcome back to KLBJ. You're going in space, you're going with the Russians, you're going in October. Give us a background of what's going on. Yeah, I've been uh, uh, pursuing, uh, you know, not only getting myself into space, but frankly uh, uh, opening up the civilian space travel business, you might say, uh, really for about 30 years. With all the money I've uh, made out of the computer games industry, I've reinvested it into, uh, you know, civilian space travel. And uh, I own, one of the companies I own is called uh, Space Adventures, which has flown five people to the International Space Station ahead of me, and I'll be the sixth private civilian to fly in space. And uh, also that'll make me the first second-generation American. My father was a, a NASA astronaut, uh, so I'll be uh, ushering in the second generation of space travel. Has this been a lifelong dream to do this, Richard? It, it sure has. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I think every kid grows up, at least for some brief window, right. wanting to grow up to go to space or be an astronaut, but most people have a, to, you know, grow out of it in some way. Uh, for me, I, I can remember very distinctly a time when I was a kid when uh, the, one, of the, uh, one of the NASA doctors uh, was giving me an eye test and noticed that I had poor eyesight and said, hey, Richard, I'm really sorry, but you'll never be able to be selected as a NASA astronaut. And as opposed to giving up on the dream, for me, you know, I, I wasn't about to take no for an answer. So I said, well, we'll see about that. <laughs> and, uh, and ever since then, I've been devoted to the privatization of space and finding a way to get myself there uh, by, on my own if I wouldn't be hired by NASA. So you'll spend how long at the space station? I'll spend uh, a little over a week actually on board the International Space Station. But I'll, I'll actually launch on a uh, Russian Soyuz rocket, spend about two days in that rocket, in the Soyuz, uh, uh, chasing or you know, rendezvousing and docking with the ISS. Right. Uh, seven or eight days on the ISS, and then once we undock, uh, you uh, drift away to get a safe distance away from it before you power up your engines. And once you fire your engines, you're on the ground in just a few minutes uh, after that. And you'll be uh, returning to Russia? It's Go actually in Kazakhstan, which is a former Soviet uh, bloc country. That's Bar- Barat's country, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Marat from the Borat. Borat. Yeah, 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 exactly, <laughs> exactly right. And uh, uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a big uh, uh, Kazakhstan has a big uh, you know, you know, desert, you might say, uh, covering most of that uh, continent, and uh, so it's a nice big target area to launch and return yeah, from. You, you would want to land on sand and not rock. Well, they actually do a really good job. You know, they, you think about uh, you know splashdown that the U.S. Uh, used, and when you're moving very fast, you know, water is a lot like concrete, frankly. Anyway, sure. it doesn't absorb much. And so when they land on the ground, which seems to an American who's used to splashdowns like a, a much harder surface, it actually turns out it's not very much different. Uh, and under under canopy, when that thing does hit the ground, there's a, some little retro rockets that fire about half a second before you hit the ground that are called soft landing thrusters uh, that soften the impact to, to a mere about 25 Gs of impact. So still a hefty blow. It's about a 35-mile-an-hour car crash. Jeez. And uh, uh, But the seats are designed, the seat liner you were talking about, uh, uh, that, that they custom-fitted for me, uh, uh, you know, helps absorb the blow as well as the seats are on shock absorbers, so it uh, makes it survivable. What are your duties once you arrive in the space station, Richard? Well, uh, most of what I'm doing on the way up and on the way down is, uh, uh, you know, making sure that I don't uh, endanger the rest of the crew, frankly, <laughs> is uh, probably my, my job number one, other than the, my personal research uh, and commercial activities. Uh, but I do uh, have a variety of, uh, of uh, functions that I perform. Uh, for example, uh, during the launch sequence, uh, I happen to be uh, keep the, uh, most conveniently near a couple of key valves. Uh, one is to pump uh, condensation uh, to various uh, places because as the air conditioners run, you don't want uh, water in the electronics, and so I uh, do the condensation pumping, a little manual pump. Uh, plus, I have the oxygen flow valves near my right knee so that uh, uh, you know during a, a pressure tests and things of that nature, it often runs autom- in automatic mode, but for the manual overrides, I'm the one that operates uh, the oxygen flow valves and uh, I've got the breakers for the spacesuits and a handful of other controls that I have. Does everybody else on this flight, are, are they all Russians? Are you the only American going up? Uh, no. In fact, uh, you know, I, I brought you guys some of my uh, my mission patches here. And if you look at that, you'll see six flags, three Americans and three uh, Russians. And those would represent uh, all of us who will be on the space station while I'm there. Uh, I'm going up with an American, Mike Fink, and a Russian, Yuri Lonchikov. 
Uh, I'm coming down with two Russians, uh, Sergei Volkov and Oleg Kononenko. And there's another American, a guy named Greg Chamatov, who will have been dropped off by a space shuttle before I arrive. And he'll get picked up by a different space shuttle after I depart. So it's like a big bus station. There are people coming and going uh, in an amazing, complex uh, little dance of spaceships. Richard Garriott is with us in studio on KLBJ. Richard, why are you going with the Russians? And could you go with NASA? Is NASA offering anything this is, like this for civilian space travel? Well, you know, uh, uh, the, the primary reason we're going with the Russians, or I'm going with the Russians, is because that is actually the only, what I'll call, commercially available uh, way to do it. NASA has not uh, decided to make that available for civilians. Does that disappoint you as a, a son of an astronaut? Uh, you know, actually not at all. You know, in fact, uh, uh, you know, the, one of the great things about the Russian Soyuz rocket is in 35 years and 104 launches, they've had uh, a perfect track record of safety. So if you're mm. uh, interested in surviving yep. the experience, uh, you know, the Soyuz is uh, definitely uh, high on the list. They're the South choice. Best airlines of space travel. Then. Exactly right. Okay. <laughs> and I mean, I, I hate to talk about money, but what is the cost you're having to pay to go on this the, journey? The flight I'm uh, taking costs about $30 million, uh, And actually, unfortunately, to, I'll, I'll be the sixth uh, private citizen to go, and the, the first guy, uh, uh, the, the ticket price was about $20 million. So it's actually going up uh, each time, uh, unfortunately, due to the cost of fuel and the uh, t- trade uh, exchange rate for the U.S. Uh, dollar. And if it's ever possible, I assume you'd go to the moon as well in the future? Oh, absolutely. In a heartbeat. Uh, you know, the moon in uh, deep space, uh, you know, uh, on a mission to another, another star that would uh, be take longer than my lifetime. I'd happily go. Yeah. Is the United States, Richard, uh, at risk of, of losing its substantial lead in outer space exploration and travel? Uh, absolutely. You know, in fact, uh, there are certain things, like if you look at the International Space Station itself, uh, the laboratory hardware that's on board, the, uh, where, which lots of international partners have helped build, but the U.S. has built uh, uh, easily, I think, uh, the largest and most sophisticated parts of that laboratory. So that's a great uh, leadership aspect of the U.S. On the other hand, you know, we're retiring the shuttle here next year, and, uh, uh, and when the shuttle retires, uh, we won't have, for some years, we will not have a way to bring people into space. And the, the French and uh, other European uh, countries already have a great heavy lift vehicle. And, the, uh, you know, as we were discussing, you know, the Chinese, uh, you know, are building their uh, you know, manned uh, space vehicles. So uh, the U.S. is actually going to be out of the race uh, to a, for in a very significant way. The, you know, every, every country in the world is going to be using the Russian Soyuz rocket here for the next few years. What do you say, Richard, if you encounter somebody who says, why do we spend all of this money on the space program? Well, that's actually one of the things I'm trying to demonstrate with my flight. If you, if you go back to, say, Christopher Columbus crossing the Atlantic, uh, you know, that was largely paid for by taxpayers, uh, you know, from the Spanish government. But pretty quickly, you know, if, uh, you know, after you've planted as many flags as you think are worth planting across uh, the boundary into space, uh, after that, it really better be demonstrably uh, re- returning a, a, as an investment uh, for taxpayers, or taxpayers, frankly, shouldn't be uh, shouldering that burden. And uh, what I'm trying to demonstrate is just like with uh, ocean voyages where private entrepreneurs or companies get, began to get involved in uh, exploration and scientific research and, more importantly, commercial, uh, commercial utilization, uh, I'm trying to show that more than just a, uh, uh, a tourist, a uh, vacationer, and, and uh, you know, wasting a large sum of money, I believe I can go there and, uh, and open up that space frontier as a business uh, in a way that uh, returns value uh, that's commensurate with the incredible cost of access. And so I'm actually doing a variety of commercial activities and uh, educational outreach and uh, uh, research activities that are, that are funding a significant percentage of my flight. Have you convinced anyone else to, to pay to go? Uh, oh yeah, there's uh, there, there's already other people. Uh, the, the most notable sign up uh, after me is a guy named Sergey Brin, one of the uh, co-founders of Google, is uh, oh. signed up to uh, be going shortly thereafter. And October twelfth is when you're going up. October twelfth. Uh, is that Columbus Day? That's it right is around. Columbus Day. Isn't exactly right. Wow, yeah, so it's a very wow. auspicious uh, auspicious day, and you know, and I'll be uh, uh, taking with me. Uh, uh, you know, when I mention these, uh, you know, kind of uh, commercial and research things, I'll be doing something called uh, uh, protein crystal growth, uh, where I'll be hoping to. Uh, help solve a bunch of uh, medical mysteries. I'll be uh, connecting to schools by ham radio from space uh, all around the globe, and I'll even be doing a, a, a connection to a lot of the gamers in my game since, uh, uh, as you know, as a, as a computer gamer, I can't uh, fail to uh, connect to my game Tabula Rasa from space.